Mega Sonic fan here, and today I uh, am going to be showing you something kind of interesting: the 161 multi cart for the Neo Geo MVS arcade system. Uh, for those that can't afford the really cool flash cart, it's like 400 something dollars. Uh, this is the next best thing, and what it looks like is this. You'll find these on eBay and around other online shops, and um, they're great. They're really great. There's a bunch of games. I mean, I, I, they definitely have their faults, for sure. The scrolling is difficult. The original menu graphic is kind of cheesy. And some of the games, a lot of the games actually are, you know, just copies and hacks that are totally lame. But there's a bunch of gems on here, too. All the Metal Slugs are on here. I think all the Samurai Showdowns are on here. And uh, they're great. But what I'm talking about today is the differences between these two. And it's kind of startling actually kind of amazing so i originally got one of these and you'll notice it's, it's the exact same thing it says series one even on the right of the sticker um and i got one of these like a year or two ago for 25 bucks because the sound did not work and this is this is that board this is the one that goes to that one uh and i found out you know through trial of uh repair and i would say process of elimination elimination i suppose that uh, this isn't this is very unlikely this is going to get fixed. So I went ahead and just bought another one, thinking, well, you know, maybe I could learn a little bit more about what's broken and compare the two. But behold, uh, an entirely different board set arrived in the same exact shell. Not only that, but there's different games on it, uh, better games actually. This older version does not include Samurai Showdown 4 or Last Blade 2. Uh, as far as I remember, which this one does. Um, it also has Samurai Showdown 5 Special, which is awesome, because I love those Samurai Showdown games. And uh, I think it's also fascinating what the uh, what the boards actually look like. Um, look at this stuff. I mean, this is... Let's get close here. Apologize for the shaky camera, as always. But look at, look at this crazy... Um, looks like a BGA chip that they've fitted onto an adapter, and then soldered to the board through these two breakout PCBs, these micro breakout PCBs. How insane is that? Uh, really cool. I love it when people do creative hacks like this to, to make the manufacturing process cheaper. Um, see if we can uh, get the focus better. I mean, look at that. That's just bizarre and cool. And actually, it looks like possibly the reason why they did this is maybe, maybe the board was designed for a different chipset originally. Not sure. Um, also interesting, there's a lot of like scratches on these chips. Like, look at that one. It's all kind of scratched up in a weird way. Not sure what that's all about. They got rid of the plug for the boards here and just hot glued it. Eh, whatever. I guess it works. Um... And then you'll notice there are some unpopulated pads here. There's PC-12, PC-11, PC-10. Um, and in high probability, those are supposed to be 100 NF mic microfarad capacitors to reduce high-frequency noise on the power rails. The reason I say that is they're underneath these Altera CPLD chips, um, or FPGAs. Uh, they're either, F either FPGAs or CPLDs. And, oh, look, they're even labeled PCM, CP1. That's pretty cool. And here, of course, is a, a, a clock generator um, of sorts. There's, you can see the crystal there, but I haven't looked this up, so I actually don't know exactly what that chip does. But very interesting stuff. And those these pads that, are, that you see all missing here, I, I don't know about these two, but I know the other ones are connected to power rails. You can tell by the wide traces. So I'm going to go ahead and populate those with 100 NF caps, because why not? It's probably better for it. And uh, the bottom board looks like they're all pretty well populated. These, of course, are most likely going to be the ROM chips. Um, though it's interesting, it's interfaced with the Altera chip. I guess that makes sense. Uh, so the other big advantage of, these, of this new design is they finally put in regulators on each board. Nice, big, chunky regulators. 1084-33. That, of course, is a knockoff version of the LM1084, which was originally a national semiconductor chip. Nice analog chip. I miss national semiconductor. They were a great company to work with. And TI is Texas Instruments. Oh, it's like working with the devil, but they own half the market now. 
And uh, yeah, here's another one for this board. Also really great. I will say I don't trust these caps at all. Um, electrolytics uh, are a very common failure point. You can actually see here they didn't put enough solder on uh, on that one. Yikes. That's pretty bad. And uh, I might replace those with ones that I know are reliable, some nice Nietzsche cons that I ordered. Because why not? make this thing a little more durable. I want it to last a long time using it on my, my nice MVS. Um, what else have we got here? Oh, interesting. If you look here, you can actually see this bent up a little bit. This chip on this board, it kind of flexes. Ugh, <laughs> it's not so hot. But if you, if you don't touch it, it's probably all right. So I'm going to stop touching it. And uh, yeah, let's see the, you can see the backside for the last part. And of course we have a couple more missing pads for power rails. That's just a cut cost, by the way, uh, more likely than not. Uh, and I will tell you though, there is some mistakes in the, um, trace layout, which is not surprising. Uh, whenever you're working with power rails, it's good to do thermals, but you should never have a really thin trace like that. You see that tiny trace going to that? So these three make sense. They're pretty thin. The thermals setting they have on there on their board design software is pretty pretty low, unnecessarily low. But here, this this one little thing going to there, that's ridiculous. That's not how you decouple a prop a proper decoupling cap. It's not how you lay it out properly. Um, and then I noticed one other one other uh, layout, one very glaring layout mistake. Can you spot it? Can you spot it? It's that one. What the heck, man? That's not how you uh, make the width of a trace to a large power decoupling cap. That trace should be four times that size. So this isn't going to break anything. My guess is it will function perfectly perfectly fine with these flaws. It's just bad practice, bad design. Whoever designed this knew a lot about uh, microcontrollers and a lot about CPLDs, FPGAs, a lot more than I do, but they obviously did not know analog uh, worth their salt at all. They also obviously were very ignorant uh, how to lay out a proper analog power stage. And that's okay. We all have our, our, our skill sets. And honestly, I wish I had theirs. I'll trade my, my knowledge of analog stuff for that. So, uh, now we have the other board, the older version, and this has been documented already on YouTube, some interesting videos, but might as well just talk about it su super briefly here. Uh, you got the same Altera, most likely the same. Yeah, the, the Altera Max. Interesting they're using the Max and not the Max 2 because the Max is obsolete, I believe. Max 2 is the newer one and easier to get, but maybe cheaper in China, wherever these are made. You'll notice uh, these caps look really dodgy. This one's actually folded over to the point the pins are almost shorting. Let's see if I can zoom in on that. It looks pretty bad. And... Um, yeah, not, not too much to get excited about here. This board is way worse quality than the new one, so I'm really glad they redesigned it. And I'm really glad I bought the redesigned one, not knowing. I've actually reflowed all of these chips. They looked super dodgy when I got it. The solder itself just looked, like, crusty and old. Um, for those of you that have seen, like, um, highly oxidated, nasty-looking solder, you know what I'm talking about. This uh, plug here is nice. They removed that, obviously, on the new one. But, you know, it's not necessary. It's not like people are going to be opening these up all the time. And then this regulator was not populated. So there's a video, um, I wish I remembered the user's name. If you do a quick search, 161 Neo Geo MVS, there's a great video where uh, somebody from uh, the forums talks about how to populate this chip and make the board nicer. And what they had previously done, if you see this empty spot right here, that was a diode. And this is also a diode. So there's a 5-volt source coming in from the MVS, and those two diodes through their forward voltage drop dropped it down to, what's that, like 3.4? Something like that. Because, uh, yeah, if you do 5 volts minus 0 0.6, 0 0.7, you got 4.3. And that 4.3, by the way, led to uh, this, this CPLD over here, this other Altera CPLD, which is in a really old package type. And, um, and then it dropped it again with the second diode to make it closer to 3.3, which feeds all the other logic on the board. Uh, this is a terrible way to design things, terrible way to design things, for, for two reasons. One is the forward voltage drop of a diode is, is uh, I think it's linearly proportional to the amount of current going through the diode. I guess it depends on the diode, but it is, it is, it is relational to it. So um, 
as current increases on the board, your voltage drop is going to change, and and vice versa. As, as current decreases, your voltage out is going to change, is going to um, be less, or depending. So that means you have a fluctuating voltage, um, and and I will tell you from experience, three point three volt logic does not like that. Three point three volt logic really likes a steady, solid three point three volts. A lot of times, if you give it even three point five, three point six, you can break it, and especially up to four. So really, really, really bad design here. Like, I cannot stress that enough. And that's probably why this broke, is somebody's uh, power supply was probably turned a little bit over five, and so that changes the setup with these with these diodes, and maybe they loaded a game that has lower current consumption, um, and so the, the forward voltage drop is different, and then your, your output voltage is different. And so that very likely blew this chip up, which is why I don't get sound on this board. Everything works but sound. Uh, in addition to that horrible design flaw, you have the world's most janky, questionable connector here. I mean, I guess there's worse ones, but you got this lead holding it down. Um, and all the solder was really bad on here. I reflowed all of these chips as well as the solder on both those connectors and uh, in the hope that maybe the sound issue is not related to this power thing. Eh, you know, hoping for the best. What can you say? I like to waste my own time sometimes. And uh, as with the other board, there was a lot of unpopulated um, capacitors. You can see there's a bolt capacitor they didn't populate there. And they're obviously just trying to save money on the, on the ceramic caps. Um, kind of strange if you ask me. These boards are already really um, not that cheap. You know, if these boards were 20 bucks, it would make sense to me. When you're selling these for $100 with a lot of resellers, resellers it doesn't make sense to me while you're skimping on 10 cents of capacitors, 5 cents of capacitors. It's kind of weird to me. But I guess they don't really care about people opening these up and doing a review like I'm doing. So know what you're going to buy. Um, and they're improving them now, which is fantastic. So maybe, you know, maybe they did learn from their lesson. And this new design is way better from the looks of it. I haven't run it for a lot of hours, so I can't give you like an actual... Um, you know, quality check uh, at length in that way as far as uh, durability. But I can tell you from just looking at the layout, no crappy connectors, um, you know, much, much better power stage. You got nice, bulky 1084s on here that'll handle high current, doing proper step down, proper LDO, um, and so a low dropout regulator. And uh, yeah, you know, a little bit of analog design issues, a little bit of missing caps. Typical stuff you get, for the most part, when you're buying overseas, um, inexpensive stuff. Uh, and so, yeah, these have come down in price quite a bit as well. Um, that might be due to the reduced chipset as well. These, these ROMs can't be that cheap. So go out and buy yourself one of these bad boys and play some Samurai Showdown 4. And uh, enjoy yourself some Neo Geo 330 Mega Power. This is Sega Sonic Fan, signing out.